Hello, it is February 10th, 2022. This is As the World Burns. I'm your host, Randall Burns. Today's topic is The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. The Wallace Wa Waddles' The Science of Getting Rich was one of the early books on mater achieving material prosperity published within the New Thought movement in the early 1900s. Now, it was published in 1910. Waldos had previously published other works on health and self-promotion in the magazine Nautilus. Uh, Nautilus was a kind of umbrella magazine for the New Thought movement and was one of their major uh, organs for publishing new works. They had previously published some work by uh, William Walter Anderson on the issue of prosperity. That, and, that, and Anderson's work borrowed, or Atkinson's work borrowed heavily from Eastern thought. And there was a book by Bruce McCalland, uh, Prosperity Through Thought Force, which I have not yet reviewed. And those are the only ones I found in this genre in that period. Now, what it's, what's clear is, is that New Thought became very influential in the self-help literature and also in sales and marketing literature in the mainstream business community. It's just part of the ethos. Waddles was of the Emersonian influence in the New Thought movement. There was also influence from theosophy and some other areas. Uh, Christian science was, was a major influence, and through that, uh, Quigley, the Phineas Quigley, who was a early originator of, of hypnotism and was no, not at all secretive about what he was doing, by the way. I think Waddles was, again, of the Emersonian transcendentalist rationalist influence in New Thought. He was trying to integrate the science of his day into broadly ecumenical Christianity and show compatibility. This is something kind of in today's uh, America may seem a little bit uh, unusual and that there's a real anti-science uh, bent in a lot of contemporary conservative Christian thought. Waddles was 180 degrees opposite of that both politically and uh, in terms of his philosophical orientation. But, but when you read his work, he's unabashedly Christian. There's, you know, he's quoting Gospels all over the place. This is you know, just who this man is. And he's just not what you think of in contemporary American society as a serious Christian, but he is. Now, I think that the book holds up remarkably well for a book that's over 110 years old at this point. I'm, I'm, I think it's really impressive that anybody could do that. Uh, as well as he did. And we're talking someone with very minimal resources and education that doing this. He was operating out of Indiana and did not have the resources that, say, an Emerson had of, of his day. The basic point of the book is the first step to advancing one's financial position is to change how one thinks. Waddles was an advocate of positive thinking, improvement of self-image, visual, visualization, all before those terms were widely used. And it, and it entered the, the main culture. It is unclear to me how original Waddles was. However, his writing style is exceptionally clear. And so I think that he may have had influence in terms of popularizing ideas that were otherwise, for example, in Emerson, I think much less accessible. And I don't know how he holds up compared to the uh, other contemporaries that I mentioned that predated him. He was actually very critical of theosophy, and I am I lean that way also. Quite frankly, I think Helena Lovetsky may have had some mental, some serious mental health problems, and I'm not alone in that thought. After Waddles, the New Thought movement would tend to congregate around the idea that spirit is the ultimate reality, that was an early advocate of that idea it was Mayor, Mayor ba Mary Baker Eddy, the founder of the Christian Science Movement. 
which at the time had um, was much more mainstream than today. You know, it, it only really, the, the flaws around that only were really started to come out in the 1920s when medicine started to improve markedly and her, and some of her own limitations in this respect had, had become more apparent. The, but Waddles, you know, Phineas, Qu uh, Phineas Quigley, who later, uh, who, who Mayor Becker Eddy broke with to go in an explicitly theist direction, you know, made no secret around the, uh, the science that he was using of hypnotism. And, and in fact, he's cited in Harvard Medical School today. Waddles clearly states that body, body, mind, and soul are co-equal and all worthy of attention and work, a direction that would be echoed later on by G.I. Gurdjieff. Waddles emphasized making the most of oneself in one situation, a notion I'd say that's borrowed from Emerson. And he, he, he differentiates between competitive thought and creative thought. This is important because it leads them to encourage leaders to do things like avoid mining one's health and interpersonal relationships to, adv to advance one's uh, financial position. This resonates, by the way, with what I saw in Silicon Valley among billi billionaires there. I saw billionaires whose personal lives were just a complete and utter mess. And Waddles has very eloquent things to say about that situation and how to avoid it which is something that is missing, for example, in Napoleon Hill, and I suspect a lot of the other imitators in the prosperity gospel literature, which again, I have not yet reviewed in depth. Uh, a, a book that I have reviewed that I link to in the description is Felix Dennis, How to Get Rich. And Felix Dennis freely admitted and was very open about the, the limitations of his personal happiness and personal life, which I think, which I think makes his work actually valuable in that, in that he, he isn't a hypocrite, and he's, I think, trying to be honest about the situation and his own experience with it. He is what Waddles would call a master of competitive thought and, and adept on the plane of competition, and he's an example of that. And I, I, I linked to my video on Felix Dennis, which I thought was a very good book for what it is, but it's not a how-to manual. It's a what-not-to-do manual. <laughs> The visualization methods Waddles uh, advocated really, and, and were later expanded by Joseph Murphy and as an attempt to communicate with and direct one's subconscious mind. This would later gain scientific backing in exercises to improve luck and the luck factor, which is a book I will also be reviewing soon, which is by Richard Wiseman, it's an excellent book and it's contemporary, very contemporary. There are some caveats I have around Waddle's work. Waddle's is borrowed heavily from a deterministic view of the universe that was common among 19th century physics. This was prior to Heisenberg and more stochastic reasoning. And I think that, well, and quite, quite simply, Einstein was wrong. God does play dice with the universe, get over it. <laughs> And the book Super Forecasting, I think, in their in their worldview, deals much more adeptly with that. And I'll link to my videos on my video on that book to supplement this. Waddles advises readers to look for the most optimistic news possible. I think this is a mistake. I think instead you want to look for the most realistic and predictably accurate news that you can find, and look for the most optimistic commentary. And this may deserve its own episode to expand upon because it's a very important point. But you want to get in the state that Ben Graham said, I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't care. I'm taking care of either way. I'm prepared. And that's what you want to aspire to. There are also, Waddles was a Christian science socialist, a sort of missing link between the Christian right of today and the social justice movement of today. Socialism has been harder to attain than expected in the US than Waddles expected. However, 
for the first 45 years after Waddle's death, it, it proceeded more in that direction than I think Waddle's had anticipated. And Norman Thomas had anticipated, and I was privileged to know some of the people that made that happen, specifically Maynard Kruger at the University of Chicago, who was the research director for Norman Thomas, the successor of Eugene Debs, who Waddles mentions in his books very uh, positively. That again may deserve its own um, its its own video episode. There are now challenges from automation, globalism, uh, biotechnology, that are beyond what Waddles could have been reasonably expected to have, to have anticipated. Still, this book is a gem and will give you some real insight onto the roots of contemporary American society. Without Waddles, I question whether we'd have the prosperity gospel, Tony Robbins, Donald Trump, or Bernie Sanders as part of American culture in their present form. I mean, they're, 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 he really did, I think, prep the American society in all these directions. And a lot of the imitators of Waddles, I think, corrupted a lot of his message. And so when you when you read him, you get to see something much closer to the source and something very accessible that'll show you where things started. And you can kind of see the corruption that has inevitably come in over decades. And I think this is, it makes the book very worthwhile in my estimation. I recommend it highly. I uh, recommend if you have uh, suggestions for future episodes, I want to hear them. Please hit the like button. I'm not going to say this is going to make get you rich, but it's going to show you an example of somebody that used this 110 years ago. And you can ask yourself what is applicable in your situation and do something a little bit new and different using it as a starting off point. So Randall Burns, As the World Burns, signing off. I'll be back again soon with more episodes. Please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe. It helps the channel. I'm still trying to get my first advertising revenue and I, I want to expand the channel, but I, I, I want encouragement from you to do that. You take care. See you again soon.